That certification is to teach you the base layer understanding of what is information security. That's the whole point right there. A review I saved because it was pretty shocking. So I guess this is the actual review. So the review says, I passed the test, so don't think I'm looking to blame the book for a poor outcome. It says the required information is there, but so is a lot of useless dribble. The book has a surprising number of typos and some just plain wrong information. It says the editor slept through this one. Mostly it just needed to get to the point. It says Security Plus is not a cert with any value if you aren't working for DOD. It doesn't test for any skill skills, just your recall of acronyms and buzzwords. The book needs to teach that and quit pretending to be useful in any other way. So this person is saying that they took the security plus. Well, this is a review based off of the book somebody else wrote, a review somebody else wrote for a book. But this review is saying that they read a security plus book. It was filled with typos. And then they realized security plus isn't good unless you're working in a, for the DOD Department of Defense. They want you to recall a bunch of acronyms and buzzwords. I would actually agree with about 70% of that. <laughs> Security Plus is a mandatory certification if you want to work for the Department of Defense doing any type of IT work. I was in the Army. I was a part of the Department of Defense. It is a mandatory cert. So if that's what you want to do, I would get it. Can you apply your Security Plus cert in the civilian world? Of course you can. It just depends on what lane in tech you want to go. So obviously, if you're working at the help desk or you're trying to be a database developer or a computer programmer, Security Plus probably isn't going to do much for you. But if you find yourself working at one of these companies and you're like, hmm, I want to be a... I want to be the cybersecurity guy, the cybersecurity analyst or something like that. You may have to get a security plus. I can almost promise you it's going to say you're going to have to get a security plus. It is your very first cybersecurity certification. And yes, it is loaded with a bunch of buzzwords. And yes, they do expect you to memorize a bunch of information. But that's the way a lot of these entry level certs are especially the CompTIA ones. That's just the way these tests are structured. Now, when you start getting into these higher level certs, then you got to start learning how to do stuff. So it's kind of like Network Plus. I always give this example. You got Network Plus and you got your CCNA. Those two tests are almost identical, in case you guys didn't know that. They're almost identical. They teach a lot of the same damn information. So you're like, well, what's the difference? Well, Network Plus is basically a, a non-vendor. So that means basically they're going to teach you, hey, this is a router, this is a switch, this is a TCP IP model, this is the the full you know this is the stack what is it the full stack model or whatever a TCP stack model this is this this is that CCNA they're going to teach you the same information but they're also going to teach you the commands that you need to learn how to program up a Cisco router and a Cisco switch network plus they might gloss over that a little bit but their focus is not on teaching you how to actually go in and program these actual devices. They're going to teach you what they are, but they're teaching you from a, let me give you another way. Just think of, uh, I don't know, somebody teaching you about cars. They're teaching you, all right, this is a car. You got four wheels, they got an engine, they got a steering wheel, you know, and all these various components. But then you got somebody over here teaching you about, well, this is what a Ferrari is. And you're learning about why a Ferrari is a Ferrari versus why a general car is a general car. That's kind of how that works. So with these entry level cyber, uh, entry level IT certs, like Security Plus, they're just giving you the overall general information. This is uh, what social engineering is. This is what ransomware is. This is what malware, a Trojan horse. This is how you can do some basic things to lock down the system, turn off the ports, do this. But they're not like getting into the nitty gritty details. Of this, this is the actual commands of how you type it up and do this and do this and do this. No, that's what the more specialized certs are. For. So I wouldn't totally discount Security Plus. Yes, you do need it for DOD stuff, but there are civilian companies out there that might have cybersecurity positions, and they're not DOD. There's a high chance they're gonna re they're gonna require you to have at least a Security Plus, so you have the base layer understanding of what IT security is, because that's the whole point of that test. That certification is to teach you the base layer understanding of what is information security. That's the whole point right there. That one guy, he says, uh, "Hey Tech G, I'm currently in the Army right now." And I've been looking at reclassing to a 25 Bravo for a while now. And my window is coming up in March. Do you recommend doing college classes that is uh, IT related to the MOS to be more prepared for the future and do certifications in the meanwhile? Yes, I do. All right. So in case you guys don't know, I was in the U.S. Army for 13 years. And my job in the Army, I was a 25 Bravo. 25 Bravo MOS, Military Occupational Specialty. That code is the code for the IT specialist of the military. Now, that's what 
I was. And I spent my last four and a half years in the army as an IT teacher, where all I did was teach entry level search to brand new troops in the army for four years, all day, every day, right? That's all I did. So yes, um, that one guy, if you want to go into tech and you're thinking about going into the army first, yes, I would highly encourage you to go become a 25 Bravo. And depending upon how long you stay in and how much rank you attain, they got another MOS called 25 Delta, which is like the, my understanding is like the cybersecurity MOS of the army. But anyways, I would do the 25 Bravo MOS, man. You're going to go to Fort Gordon in Augusta, Georgia. I think they changed the name to Fort Eisenhower, but it was Fort Gordon when I was there. You might be in a building called Dixon Hall. They might still have my picture up. They probably don't. But anyways, yeah, so go do that. And then when you get an opportunity to enroll into colleges, yeah, if you want to work in tech, go take you some IT classes, man. Get your IT degree, cybersecurity, information technology, something like that. Especially if the military is paying for it, then use their money and go get that stuff because it can only help you later on. So I would get all that stuff and do some certifications. Now with the certifications, the army is more than likely going to pay for your certifications because we were paying for a lot of certifications. Matter of fact, the building that I worked in, we had a testing center down the hall from my classroom. So we would train the students up, get them scheduled and march them down the hall to go take the damn test. That's how I was able to help literally hundreds of people pass certification because we had a testing center right down the damn hall. That's definitely something that you should do uh, that one guy. Hey, Tech G, is your A plus cores up to date? Yes, they are. So let's go look it up. So the 220, 1101 and 1102, they're still valid. They say they usually expire three years after launch. Now they came out with this test April 2022. We're in 2024. Yeah. So this series is still good for at least another year, another 18 to 24 months. So probably I want to say probably the summer of next year or the third or fourth quarter of next year is when CompT is going to start talking about the new A plus tests will probably be coming out. And then it probably won't come out till the following year. We're still good. So my, my stuff on my website or on my YouTube channel, my playlist is still valid.